Back again with another stimulus check update for you and make sure you watch this video all the way through until the end uh, that way because we have a lot of goodies in store for you here today um, we're going to be talking about the next stimulus bill phase four we have good news lots of good news 20 million dollars and 5.5 million dollars in rent relief that's rental assistance programs and we're also going to be talking about um good news for the people that did not get their 500 dollar uh, stimulus check for their dependents where things stand at right now and whose fault is it that we don't have our stimulus checks yet yesterday's um approval from mitch mcconnell and a shocking White House strategy reveal also as well. So let's get right into it here. Uh, basically, um, there's a shocking White House strategy, but we're going to get into that and where things stand at at the end of the video. <clears throat> but for right now, let's talk about the rental assistance, okay? Because a lot of you have commented on the video that I made yesterday and wanted to know more information about rental relief programs and rental assistance in their state so if you are one of those people and you're looking for rental assistance information just let me know inside of the comments and i will do the research on your state and get the information to you on that too so first up today we're going to talk about utah now utah is giving rental relief um helping people pay their rent and this is just only for those people who are losing who have lost the $600 weekly unemployment benefits okay next we have Clark County Clark County um, has received money from the CARES Act and 5.5 million dollars in rental assistance uh, to tenants who need the help next we have Houston Houston Texas uh, has uh, released the program uh, with $20 million in a rent relief package. Um, the breakdown of the $20 million is that the $15 million of it comes from the CARES Act and $5 million comes from donors. Okay. Now, there's also good news um, for people that did not get their $500 stimulus check for their dependents. Now, this week, starting this week, the government is sending out the remaining money to those families um, who did not receive their $500 stimulus check for their dependents um, to those families by direct deposit and also by postal mail. So if you haven't already, make sure you fill out your direct deposit information on the irs.gov website. And the website is irs.gov forward slash EIP, okay? EIP, that stands for Economic Impact Payments, okay? Um, so all the information there is on the site for you to be able to input your direct deposit information there. So that way you can make sure that you get your $500 stimulus check for your dependents. Because I know a lot of people, especially in our Facebook group, have been complaining that they have not gotten their $500 stimulus check for their dependents, and they were wondering whether or not they would have to wait until next year's uh, to receive that money. Okay. Um, so yesterday's, um, in yesterday's video, we talked about an approval that we got from Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Senate, um, who had basically stated, and I'm paraphrasing, that he's going to go along if the um, White House and President Trump agrees to the $600 unemployment boost and benefits, extending it, that he will approve of it. He will go along with it. He will agree to it also as well. Um, so he will agree to the $600 unemployment boost. So we had that approval yesterday from Mitch McConnell. So that was a huge step 
and the direction of progress on the stimulus package negotiations um, too. So whose fault is it that we have not gotten our stimulus checks yet? Okay, I'm going to give you the results. What I did was I made a post in our Facebook group um, yesterday, and I asked the group, whose fault is it that we don't have a second stimulus check yet? Just give us your thoughts, please. And I've gotten a lot of comments on it. We've gotten 95 comments on the post, okay? And the result of the post is that most people are saying that it's the Democrats' fault, that we do not have our second stimulus check yet. Uh, I believe one person said it's the Republicans' fault. A uh, few people said that it was Congress' fault. And some people said it's our, well, one or two people said it was our fault, the people's fault. Um, <clears throat> so that I found that quite, quite interesting. Um, the input and the feedback that I got from you guys, because see, public opinion can change, okay, towards politicians very quickly, okay? When um, I do a little history, short-term history on that, um, we found that in the passing, around the time of the passing of the CARES Act, all right, um, we were all waiting for the house to approve a bill that was already approved in the senate and that was sitting in the house of representatives and nancy pelosi and the democrats in the house had went on recess and in the meantime nancy pelosi went on national television with her ice twenty twenty thousand dollar ice cream fridge full of ice cream and um that did not result well for the Democrats. They got a lot of bad press because of that. And actually Donald Trump had went ahead and made an ad, put an ad out on the ears, um, you know, bashing Nancy Pelosi and saying, you know, that basically uh, millions of people are starving, hungry. The food lines are long in the food banks. And Nancy Pelosi is sitting in her kitchen next to her $20,000 refrigerator eating ice cream. <laughs> um, so there was even one quote that said, let them eat cake. And it was really, really horrible. Um, so then what happened was after they passed the CARES Act, then it was Mitch McConnell and the Republicans that were delaying month after month after month after Nancy Pelosi and the House had passed the HEROES Act and they kept saying, let's wait another month. Let's wait till May. Let's see what the job numbers are. Let's see how the economy does. They believe there's going to be a V-shaped recovery, according to the White House administration, which there's no V-shaped recovery, okay? And I don't believe there's going to be any V-shaped recovery whatsoever to this economy. So as you can see, public opinion has changed from blaming mostly the Democrats to blaming mostly the Republicans. And now I believe a lot of people are inching towards it's the Democrats' fault. So that's what I have for um, you guys on that. Public opinion can definitely change within a blink of an eye. And next thing, next up we have um, the how things stand, where things stand at right now with our second stimulus checks. Well, basically, there's been a week worth of meetings. At least some clarity is emerging in bipartisan Washington talks on a huge response bill. Okay, big package. Negotiators, they're still stuck, but they're still trying. It was a very combative meeting Wednesday involving top Capitol Hill Democrats, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Mark Meadows, White House Chief of Staff, and again, Secretary of the Treasury, Steve Mnuchin, and White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, he threatened afterward that President Donald Trump is exploring options to use executive authority to extend a partial eviction ban and address unemployment benefits. 
Now, after some movement Tuesday in House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's direction on aid to states and local governments and unemployment insurance benefits, Wednesday's session offered no breakthroughs or major progress today. <clears throat> this is what participants said after the meeting. Now, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said after the two-hour meeting that if we can reach a compromise on these big issues, I think everything else will fall into place. If we can't reach an agreement on these big issues, then I don't see us coming to an overall deal. <clears throat> and then we'll have to look at the president taking actions under his executive authority. <clears throat> Multiple issues remain, but some areas of likely agreement are coming into focus. Now, as far as jobless benefits is concerned, Nancy Pelosi is taking a hard line on extending a $600 a week supplemental pandemic, pandem, pandemic federal jobless benefit, which that expired last week on the 31st. <clears throat> Republicans offered to extend the benefit into December and reduce it to $400. Um, the aides were unauthorized to discuss the private talks and spoke to the Associated Press on condition of anonymity. The unemployment insurance issue is perhaps the most important to resolve right now because it affects 30 million Americans. But some Senate Republicans are up for re-election in the fall, and they want to go back to their districts with a stimulus package. Okay, They don't want to go back there empty-handed um, because it just would not look good for them, especially... Uh, both Republicans and Democrats. Now, as far as aid to states and local governments, the White House offered Democrats $150 billion to help state and local governments um, to alleviate the revenue losses from the damage that the C-word pandemic has brought on the economy. Now that matches the amount appropriated after a huge behind the scenes van battle during negotiations on a bipartisan $2 trillion bill that passed in March, the CARES Act. But much of that money is still left over. All sides want greater flexibility in using it, but Pelosi is demanding far more, almost $1 trillion. And Republicans like Susan Collins of Maine, Cory Gardner of Colorado, and Mitt Romney of Utah, they want more money as well. As far as cash and economic stimulus, uh, Pelosi and President Donald Trump agree on another $1,200 direct payment to most Americans, okay, that will cost about $300 billion. Uh, Pelosi is always is also pressing for a 15% increase in food stamp benefits. And Democrats, they also won't allow $20 billion in aid to farmers without a trading off food aid. So Democrats are also pressing for help for renters and homeowners that are having difficulty making house payments and help for frontline essential workers with hazard pay. Both sides support more funding for child care grants, community health care centers, and energy subsidies for the poor. Now, education-wise, um, this is a cornerstone to any agreement, and this is one of the areas in which both sides are eager to be generous. It involves over $100 billion to help out the school systems. Um, as far as liability shield, Senator Majority Leader Mitch McConnell Republican from Kentucky, he's continuing to insist that whatever legislation gets passed through the Senate has to include some sort of liability shield against lawsuits brought against businesses, schools, and universities, and charities that operate during the pandemic. Now, Pelosi is still opposed to that for now, but Democrats, uh, they see it as a key to a final agreement. And they are not ruling out the idea, but the talks have yet to begin on this topic. And there seems to be suspicion among Republicans that the White House negotiating team 
is not as solidly behind this idea of liability shield as McConnell is. So basically, this is a McConnell thing. Okay, it's not a White House thing, and it's definitely not a Democrat thing. Now, as far as the Postal Service, it's another item that they've been negotiating on. Um, this is being run by Postmaster General Louis DeJoy, uh, who is a Trump ally, and he's under attack for management changes that have coincided with delays in mail delivery. Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said DeJoy had some answers, but he and Pelosi were still dissatisfied. Now, Schumer said after the meeting, we are demanding that the regulations they put in place, which cut employment and cut overtime, be rescinded, particularly because of uh, the C word sickness and because of the elections Schumer had said afterward. Now, a recent Democratic offer called for $10 billion for overtime and other costs down from a bloated $25 billion plan that the House passed um, in their bill. Now, as far as the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, more than $100 billion is left over from the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, which can give relief money for small businesses. And top advocates like Senator Marco Rubio, Republican from Florida, are backing plans to ease some loan forgiveness rules and permit a second round of PPP payments to especially hard hit businesses. Now, non C word sickness items that have nothing to do with the pandemic, these competing, the competing bills from the House Democrats and Senate Republicans, they include a fair amount of money for non C word sickness related items. The Senate proposal contains an almost $2 billion for a new FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C., $30 billion for the Pentagon, including direct help for powerful defense contractors, and that's likely to get dumped out of the bill, as will a more generous federal tax deduction for state and local taxes that Democrats included in their bill um, to as well. So we have a lot still going on right now. The next stimulus package is not dead. All right. At least it's not dead yet. But we have good news that, you know, they're still in there and the Democrats have the upper hand right now in these negotiations. They have plenty of leverage. Now, first of all, they have the White House. Uh, which all they need, they already have President Trump on their side with the stimulus checks, okay? And Mitch McConnell will, you know, he showed his support and his approval yesterday um, based upon whatever the White House and President Trump agrees to. So all we need is an exact agreement from President Trump on the $600 weekly unemployment benefits and aid to state and local governments. So I think the unemployment benefits thing, uh, the $600 will probably be easier to get an agreement and approval from President Trump than would the money and funds for state and local governments because uh, President Trump has already expressed his opposition to giving money to Democrat-run states that were poorly managed. OK, so all this back and forth, um, the Democrats are saying right now, including also uh, Secretary Steve Mnuchin, that the goal is to get a, a, a deal by Friday, OK, to have a deal by Friday and then to have it sent on paper over to the Senate, hopefully by next week, and hopefully the Senate can take a vote on it. But the Senate does plan on going on recess on Saturday, August 8th. But the plan is that they will come back to the Senate after their recess if an agreement or a deal is made and they will do a vote on a bill. Okay. 
Uh, so right now, it all comes down to what's going on in these negotiations. That is what is going to make or break this deal or make or break the next stimulus package um, pretty much. OK, so let me know what your thoughts are, people. Um, we've heard it from our Facebook group on whose fault is it that we don't have our second stimulus check? Well, YouTube, I'm talking to you, YouTube. What are your thoughts? Whose fault is it that we don't have our second stimulus check? Let me know down in the comments, okay? And from all of us here at the How to Get an 800 Credit Score family, make sure that you look in our description. The arrow is right here. The description will open up. Join our Facebook group so you can get more stimulus check updates and stimulus package updates. While you're in there, see other links for free money and other helpful resources. And from all of us here at the How to Get an 800 Credit Score family, stay safe, be blessed, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. My name is Lyndon Baptiste, and on this channel, we talk about ways to increase your credit score, build credit, and get approved for the lowest payments on mortgages and lines of credit, travel the world for free, uh, earn extra money with cash back, and if that interests you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, that way you'll never miss a single video as we make them.